All right, what do you what do you think so far? Early impressions. What do you think? Man, it's awesome. This is super cool. It's kind of what you've been dreaming of your whole life. What I have been, and just to be out here and get to to be with all these great athletes and with these amazing coaches and, and learn from them and and uh, kind of develop next to them. It's, it's really special. I was good friends with his dad Luther when we were younger. So when his dad his dad came in and started at the University of Utah about the time I was finishing up at Humboldt, and uh, we became friends then and kept in contact somewhat over the years. And so I saw Caden as a little boy and you know knew who he was when he walked in. Um, a mutual friend was coaching at the University of Utah at the time and Caden had moved here and they had just enrolled him at Skyline High as a freshman. The mutual friend said, he's going to Skyline, huh? I thought for sure you'd send him to Cordova over at Judge. And Luther said, wait a minute, Cordova's at Judge? He goes, yeah. He goes, that's where I'm going to send my boy. And uh, the coach moved out of town so that his son never played here, but it brought me Caden Ellis. He was a great basketball player too though. He was a, a standout uh, track athlete. He, he did the long jump. I think he was state champion in the long jump. We had another kid that uh, played at BYU that he, the two of them were competing against each other in the long jump. So it was, it was a great competition. Each one of them just kind of went further, further, and further. Um, but yeah, he was a star on our basketball team as well. Started as a junior and senior. Um, on the basketball team. Um, he didn't play football here as a freshman. They moved in in December. Um, and because he started his year at Skyline and transferred here, he wasn't allowed to play basketball as a sophomore, but he was able to run track and play football. And as a sophomore, you know, he was kind of gangly because he grew a lot. and. So we played him all over. He literally played almost everything except for offensive line his freshman year. When he was a junior and senior, he was our starting quarterback, and we kind of moved him all over on defense. Like, you know, we he played free safety, strong safety, a little outside linebacker. Um, he was just kind of a universal player for us. He played all over the field. Um, he played some linebacker, but never inside. He was an, always an outside of the box um, linebacker. You have to remember, I mean, he's six foot three, 240 pounds now, but he was six foot one, maybe 195 pounds when he was a senior in high school. So he wasn't humongous. He was, you know, he's a big quarterback for high school, um, but he was always an outstanding athlete. So it kind of set himself apart athletically. His senior year, he, Caden has always been a very unselfish player. His senior year in the state championship game, we were down at halftime. Caden kind of took it on himself and just took over the game. On both sides of the ball, he dominated the whole rest of the game. I, he always had the capability to do it and had done it in a few other games, but wasn't just dominant like he was in the second half of the state championship game. He ran over, around, past people. He knocked passes down, made tackles, and it was a snow-covered game. And he just elevated the level of play of that game for himself and, and really was the difference maker. Um, was you know He was the 3A MVP and was most dominant football player in the state in 3A and arguably on multiple levels, um, but didn't get, you know, Mr. Football or anything like that because he was playing on a 3A level. He is one of the kindest, most giving people I know, right? Uh, he, he follows Judge Football religiously. He texts me pretty regularly, you know, was very... Uh, compassionate when we lost and very enthusiastic when we won um, and he's just a, he's an outstanding character person you know he, he lives a very Christian lifestyle and believes in it doesn't just do it 
for the purpose of doing it. He's he believes in taking care of the fellow man, and you know if you watch him play football, he's over there grabbing his teammates, picking them up, patting them on the back, and you don't see that a lot in the NFL, you know. And he he cares genuinely about the people around him, and invests genuinely in the people around him. He when he when he texts me or calls me. He always asks about my kids, you know, and not everybody does that. Not everybody thinks beyond their immediate scope. You know, he, he's, he's genuine like that. He, and he cares, he genuinely cares. He wanted to play at the next level. And um, Dennis Erickson, who's a good friend of mine, uh, wanted very badly for the University of Utah to offer him a scholarship. They knew what he knew what kind of athlete Caden was going to be. Um, and Utah just didn't understand quite where he fit. Idaho came knocking and said, look, we, we want you, we want you really bad. And they offered him a full ride scholarship. And he had to actually sit out fall of his freshman year because they didn't have a scholarship to give him until spring football started. So he sat out fall. Uh, you know, some people take a gap year. He took a gap semester. Um, and then started at the University of Idaho in the fall of his, what would be his freshman year. And he started from the time he walked on campus till he walked off. You know, unique athlete. He scored touchdowns on offense and defense. He played some offense, played fullback and tight end, as well as playing outside linebacker, defensive end, strong safety. He played a little corner, a little nose guard. I mean, he did everything at the University of Idaho. He's the exact same person he was before he came into the NFL. He's never been motivated by the money. He's motivated by the competition. Um, he loves to compete. It doesn't matter whether it's checkers or pro football. He wants to win. He wants to compete. Um, but he's, he, he honors the competition. He wants to see other people succeed as well as himself. And, you know, he's not going to buy flashy cars. He's not going to buy fancy jewelry, you know. and and. In college, when he scored touchdowns, and he did make an interception in, in camp for the uh, uh, Saints, he goes to the end zone, and his end zone celebration is he kisses his hand, and he points up to God because his God-given talent. He, you know, he worked hard at who he is and where he is, but he feels blessed and genuinely blessed with what he's been able to succeed and achieve. And, you know, he's, he, it won't change that kid at all. He'll be the same guy he was before he started.